Canoeists have more strokes than they can shake a paddle at. If you're new to whitewater canoeing, here is a brief set of essential strokes. This video is sponsored by Esquif Canoes. Esquif, family owned and part of your family's adventures. The backbone of any maneuver is the forward stroke. The rigid rules of how to do the forward stroke in basic canoeing need not apply to whitewater. What is key for Tandem Partners is that they paddle in time with one another as much as possible and that efficient power comes from slightly rotating the torso during the stroke. It is important to allow the forward stroke to be adaptable to any maneuver. Using either a vertical or slanted paddle also affects how straight the canoe travels. By placing the stroke further ahead of your body, or vice versa, closer to your hip, can help control turns. Even without fancy draws, cuts and J's, see how forward strokes and some simple rudders nail this double S turn around rocks and along wave troughs. To paddle a straight path, canoeists often use either the J-stroke or the river J-stroke. The J-stroke is most often used for light-duty course corrections. The J works by gently prying the paddle off the gunnel. As the forward stroke ends, the J begins. Position the T-grip above the gunnel, the shaft hand next to the hip, and blade behind the body. Next, twist the T-grip thumb forward and down while pulling inward. This will pry the power face of the blade off the gunnel. The key to success is turning your grip hand thumb down before pulling the T-grip inward. The River J is more powerful than the traditional J-stroke. Following a forward stroke, the blade is again positioned behind the paddler. The River J begins with the grip thumb pointing up and the shaft hand next to the hip. From here, pulling the T-grip in over the knee uses the paddler's non-power face to pry and straighten the canoe's path. Setting up for maneuvers like ferries and eddy turns often requires pivot strokes to properly point the canoe for an effective exit angle. With the angle set, efficient forward strokes build momentum to the point where the turn is initiated by the stern paddler. Control of the turn then goes to the bow paddler's cut stroke. Continue with forward strokes and then initiate again to begin the final turn into the eddy. After initiation, control again rests with the bow's use of a cut stroke. Gliding into the eddy with a cut ensures accuracy of the eddy entry and allows the stern to maintain momentum with forward strokes. Pivoting in an eddy is often the first step in preparing for an eddy exit. The draw stroke uses a nearly vertical paddle to pull water toward the canoe at the midpoint between hip and knee. By turning the grip hand's thumb outward, you can easily slice the paddle back to the starting point to repeat the stroke. Pivots away from your paddle side use the pry stroke. The pry also uses a nearly vertical paddle, but this time it pushes water away from the canoe. Begin with the paddle against the canoe midway between hip and knee. Pry the grip hand inward over your onside leg. Avoid pulling too far or the pry begins to lift water upward. Slice the paddle back to its starting point by twisting the grip thumb outward to set up for repeated pries. Stern initiation strokes are used to begin a canoe's arc into a turn. For the stern pry, position the paddle alongside the canoe with the T-grip aligned outboard of your knee. 
The stroke requires a short, quick pry off the gunnel that finishes with the T-grip above the onside knee. At the end of a forward stroke, knife the blade alongside the canoe toward the stern with your grip thumb pointing skyward. With the paddle close to the hull and reaching toward the stern, quickly pull the T-grip inward over your onside knee. Stern draws begin with the T-grip positioned over your knee and the paddle shaft horizontal. The blade should be pointing behind you and away from the canoe. From here, punch the T-grip outward while holding your shaft hand fixed in place adjacent to your hip. From the end of a forward stroke, slice the paddle into position so that it points towards the back and away from the canoe. The grip hand should be thumb up and positioned over the knee. Complete the stern draw with a forceful outward punch of the grip. Lift the paddle clear of the water ready for the next stroke. After initiation strokes, control is shifted to the bow paddler's steering strokes. The bow controls a carving canoe's arcing path. Once the canoe is turning, the bow places the paddle vertically in the water adjacent to the canoe, close to the knee. The shaft arm is bent at the elbow. The grip hand is located above the shaft hand with the thumb pointing at the canoe. Adjust the twist on the blade to tighten or broaden the arcing path of the canoe. The cross bow cut sees the paddle cross over to the off side. It's held vertically with the blade cutting into the approaching water. With the top grip hand's thumb pointing away from the canoe, the paddler steers by adding or reducing the amount of twist on the blade. Efficient strokes used in a refined sequence allows paddlers to maneuver their canoes with ease and grace. Set angles with pivots, create momentum with adaptive forward strokes, and paddle in carving arcs by the pairing of initiation strokes and bow steering strokes. With these essential strokes, tandem canoes can maneuver through rapids, work as a team, and confidently keep the open side up. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Check out Westwood Outdoors for more paddling tips, courses, books, and videos.